What's up guys? So I'm going to show you where I purchased all the materials for this painting. The first store I go to is Walmart. You can purchase really inexpensive paint there as well. I picked up the sponge that I used to make the trees there. And the next store I go to is Dollar Tree because they have the best deal on poster board paper. So the paint that I like to buy is Rust-Oleum Paint Gloss. So this is dark gray. Semi-glossy works as well, but they just ran out of the normal gloss. And make sure to grab the black gloss. All right, this is the type of sponge I like to buy. You can find in your cleaning section. And then now we're at Dollar Tree. This is where I get the paper. You get two for one, so I only spend a dollar. And the size is 22 by 28, and I can make at least two paintings with it. All right guys, so I'm gonna show you how I cut my piece of paper. So this paper right here is a 22 by 28, and we are gonna cut it into two pieces of 11 by 17. So I measure the width out to 11 and the length out to 17. I like this size because it's easier to frame and I'm able to ship it a lot more cost efficiently. Now I would paint bigger. You can honestly do any size you want. I, I, just me personally, I don't have the biggest space to paint at the moment because uh, I paint in like a shed area. So this size is really good for me. And after that, I use the excess paper for making waterfalls or for making waves and waters. So make sure to hang on to that piece because it really comes in handy, handy <laughs> um, when you are making more landscape pictures. All right guys, let me show you how I create my stencil. First off, it, you could just Google wolf silhouette Bruh. and then this will probably pop up, but save you time. I have a link to download the image. After that, you grab your excess poster board paper. Now it doesn't need to be this size, but I prefer a bigger piece of paper because at, once you put it on, you don't want to overspray and get the lines if it's smaller. So after that, we put it on the screen and then we're gonna trace it out. And once you trace it out, you're gonna cut it out with an X-Acto knife or scissors. I prefer an X-Acto knife because you get the fine lines and you wanna get that mouth detail. And you can pick that up at Walmart, Michaels. I will have a link down below of all my materials and tools I use. So save you some time too. All right, let's move on to the painting now. Oh yeah, and for the stencil, I cut it on a clipboard, so you can pick those up super cheap. So grab your circular object. I use a stove cover top. I find them really inexpensive and like a really good size. So I sprayed white on the poster board paper. Now I'm spraying gray. Don't You don't have to spray it all over. You can lightly spray it because you, you kind of want more of a shadow look with it. After that, grab your newspaper or your magazine paper. I prefer magazine paper. So you just place it over and then you're just gonna lift up. You could do it as many times as you want for the certain look you're going for. I did it a couple more times because I wanted more texturized. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button right now, please hit that. It would really help out my channel and I would really appreciate it. All right, next, put the circular object back in the center. Now spray gray all around it. I like using gray as the base for the sky because when you do the trees later, they will pop out instead of like a dark, dark black. But I, I am gonna add black up top to give it more depth in the sky. And then you just wanna fluidly spray it across Next, I grab white and I'm spraying onto the lid lightly to create a halo effect around the moon. All right, now I'm gonna spray white on my finger and I'm going to flick it onto the painting. Now, the key tip for this is that you do a pre-flick before you flick onto the painting because if you don't, you might over splatter and get too much and nobody wants that. Okay, let me get a drum roll. And bam, so that is the moon. 
Look at that. Look at that nice halo, the cool texture. All right, now we're gonna move on to making a V shape at the bottom. So you cover up the little bit of moon because it gives it the shadow effect at the bottom. So at this point of the painting, I stopped for about 20 minutes to let it dry. You could speed that up if you had a blow dryer to uh, dry up the paint, but I didn't, so I just took a break. And then I came back out and I'm going to place the wolf stencil right in the middle of the moon because that is going to be the backlight so and then for the stencil you just want to lightly spray onto it and you don't want to overspray it because once you do that you kind of ruin it because it gets um it'll start dripping and then all the details will be lost so i sprayed bla black in the circular object i just flipped it over and then i am using the sponge to make the trees. Now for the trees, you want to kind of do it in small lines. First you go with like the biggest part of the tree. And then after that, you just lightly go up with smaller lines. You can think of it as like making a pyramid. You know how a pyramid has a big base and then you keep going up and it points. That's kind of how I make these trees. So I sped up the rest of the painting because now I am just doing more trees with the same technique I was talking about. So you want to cover mostly the sides of the painting. And then once I get close to the moon, I make smaller trees because you're trying to create the illusion that trees are in the background. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and learned something from it. And if you want to create this painting as well, I would love to see it, so tag me at Kyle Spray Paint Art on Instagram. And if you guys love the music in this video, go check out my dad's YouTube channel at How Music. He makes really cool lo-fi, hip-hop, as well as just really experimental music. Go give him a sub.